In the Object Properties window for the object that you have selected, there's a section below Depth called Parent. If you were to click on the drop-down menu on the right side of the text field, you should get a drop-down of all the objects you've already created in your game. This is where you would select a parent for this object. When an object has a parent, it inherits all of its events and actions, as if it were its own events and actions. This is useful for many different circumstances. For example, let's say you're making a game like Space Invaders. So you've got your ship at the bottom of the screen, and you're shooting up at all these different enemies. Now, all these enemies look different, and all these enemies may perform differently, which is fine, but they're all considered enemies. And let's say that when you shoot the enemy, it dies. Now we could go into each object for each of our enemies and create a collision check that states when it collides with the player's bullet, it dies. But there's really no need to go into each object individually. What we could do is create a parent object. Sometimes I like to prefix this object with par underscore and the name of the parent, if I'm not actually going to put it in the game as an object. Once you're inside the object properties window for this parent, you can say, when this parent collides with the player's bullet, die. Then you simply go to all of your objects that are enemies, go to the dropdown and select parent enemies, and now every single enemy in your game will die when hit by a bullet because it has inherited the event for collide with bullet and the action for destroy instance. The cool thing is, each object still gets to have its own code so each enemy can still perform different actions. However, they're all related to this one parent. It's a great way to have one reference point or to just pass down a bunch of code to many different other objects. It doesn't just stop there though. You can create more than just one parent to a bunch of children. That parent may also be a child of a different parent. So you could have a big list of parents with children that have parents of children and parents and children and parents and children. I mean, that might get a little out of hand, but the point is, it makes it really easy to reference just one object in your game and affect many other objects at the same time. Another good example is, let's say the game ends when all of the enemies are dead and no longer on the screen. Instead of telling GameMaker to check for each enemy individually, you could just check to see if that parent enemies object exists in your world, and if not, well then no enemies exist, and the game can end. It's really powerful to use parents. And really the only thing you have to understand is, each object in your game can have its own events and its own actions, but when multiple objects need to have the same type of events and same type of actions, it actually might be best to put it into a parent. 